Welcome to Let's Talk About It Sunday, an extension of KELA's weekday local talk show featuring a variety of subjects of local interest. This program was pre-recorded, so we're unable to take live calls on today's show. And now, let's talk about it. Welcome to Let's Talk About It Sunday. I'm your host, Peter Barno, and you're listening to KELA AM 1470 or KMNT 104.3. You can also stream the show every Sunday on KELAAM.com at 7.30 in the morning and KMNT.com at 11.30 p.m. We have a great show today. A good friend of mine, Braden Alley's here. He, he started the Crack and Board Shop, and I don't know if you've ever been to Riverside Park. If you're from the Twin Cities, you definitely have been to Riverside Park. They've got a skate park there. We're going to talk about the need to maybe improve that skate park, but I really want to focus on Braden and his business and how he got there. He's a entrepreneur. He's got a cool skate shop. If you don't know this about me, uh, I grew up skating too, and I love it. It's a lot of fun. I'm not so good at it anymore at my age, but it's a lot of fun, and it's something that I think a lot of kids can get into. I think even adults could get into. And if you go by the skate park at Riverside, you will see there are people there. There are things going on. It's a lot of fun. And I wanted to talk about Braden's story and talk about the Crack and Board Shop. So, Braden, thanks for joining me today. How are you? Uh, I'm good. How are you? I'm super happy for you to be here because... I was your apprentice for a day putting together a skateboard. Yes, you longer. were. <laughs> it was a lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, it was actually the, the Moonshine of MFG bootlegger. Yeah, it's super cool. And I actually posted the photos from our little uh, building, and they actually uh, liked it on Twitter. Oh, really? Yeah, so I was kind of impressed that I have that kind of reach on yeah. Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> it was really you, though. So. Yeah, well, I mean, it was, it was a team effort, right? It was a team effort. Yeah. And so, so Braden, let's talk a little bit about, uh, let's start, I want to do a little bit, I want, we're going to obviously talk about your, your accident. Yeah, obviously. Because right? it also tells the story about safety and yeah. making sure kids are safe and wear helmets. Yeah. Uh, but I do want to talk before that. So before Crack and Board Shop, before all that, talk to me about how you got into skateboarding. Well, oh man, that's okay. So like, so like I, uh, I, uh, I, I. Well, I gotta think about this for a second. Um, yeah, so like, so like, so like, my friend Andrew Harden. Uh, I'm not really friends with him anymore, but but that's besides the point. He 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 basically like 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 handed me this longboard and, and one day, and I was just like, oh wait, what the hell is this, right? And so and so like anyway, so like so like yeah, so like so like uh, after that, I just like searched up like. You know, like downhill longboarding, like like seeing what I could find, and sure enough, I found something, and so, yeah, and then so that was kind of cool, but yeah. And then, and so you have been longboarding for how long then? Um, let's see. I got my longboard, my 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 first longboard. What, what do you say, Dad? Like seventeen? Yeah, I I'd say like around seventeen. So like, so like seventeen, sixteen ish. Yeah. So I've been so I've been skating for that and I'm 20 23 now. So 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 long time. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so like and, 6 7 years. And and you kind of spoiled the mystery because you also have your parents with you yes. who are huge supporters. So why don't you introduce your parents? Okay, well this is James Alley, my dad. Yeah. Uh, Hi James, how are you? Hi, how are you doing? Good. And hey. then and then I have Bonnie Alley, my mom. Yeah, how are you? I'm good. Thanks. So so let's talk. So Brayden, so you know, for 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 some folks, they may be like, "Why do you 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 know why do I have you on?" Yeah, partly because of Crack and Board Shop, uh, partly because I just absolutely like you, and I think you're doing some cool stuff over at Riverside Park. Because I part appreciate of the, that. You know, you're an entrepreneur. You're young. You're 23. You're rejuvenating that park, but also because you had a traumatic brain injury because you and you you're here today because of a helmet. Yes. But you had a really traumatic brain injury. Do you want to talk about that? I mean, what what happened that day? So, on that day, I was I was going for a ride and like I, like 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 granted, right? I I can't remember much from from the injury itself because of the of the memory loss, but but anyway, so like so like from from what I can recall from parents, from brother, you know, all, all friends and family, stuff like that, so like 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 the thing is, is that like I I was I was going down a hill, and I, and I was wearing like all the proper like, 
all the proper safety equipment, you know, like pads, helmet, stuff like that, right? And then and then I, I went down this hill, and I've only done it twice in that one day, the second time being the time that I had the accident. But anyway, so yeah, so like I was going down this hill, and then I got speed wobbles, and then I took my tumbles. And you and you hit your head. Yes, I did. You I, had your helmet on. Yes. But you were in a coma for, a, what, a week? Yeah, for like 13 days. For almost two weeks. Yes, almost two weeks. Almost yeah. two weeks. Yeah, and, and but you're alive today because you wore your helmet. Well, yeah, uh, but but like the, the thing is, is that like I was wearing a paragliding helmet, not necessarily a downhill skating helmet, but still, nonetheless, the helmet saved my life, which is you know something I'm always grateful for. So, 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 Dad, do you want to talk about that day? I mean, it had to have been traumatic. Oh, it most definitely was. Uh, we got a call. Um, I got a call from our younger son, uh, Bryce. He let us know that Braden was in an accident, longboarding accident, and we didn't know much details about it. He said Braden was on his way to the hospital, so we weren't sure what was going on exactly. Uh, we didn't know if it was just a concussion, broken legs, or what it uh, what it was. So we get to the hospital and, uh, we're waiting in the waiting room and we're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And the doctor comes out and greets us fairly routine. So we think, uh, a few minutes later, they come back and say, we got to get Braden out of here. Mm-hmm. Wait, what, what's going on? We're confused. What's going on? Yeah. His brain is swelling and we need to get him to a trauma center. Heart drops immediately, right? Everyone in the room, grandma, his brother, his mom, me, we're just all stunned. Yeah. I mean, it's its the fear that every parent has. I mean, I skateboarded as a kid, and I smashed my face a couple times, right? And nothing is, well, I didn't longboard or go as fast as Braden does. Yeah. Um, but but most certainly, I mean, it had to have been, I mean, what do you, I mean, you're only thinking right now, I want my son to live, right? I mean. Absolutely. Yeah, and mom, what I mean, t- talk about that day. How traumatic is that? Exactly what he was saying. It, it went from no big deal to all of a sudden he may not make it. So yeah. they had to airlift him to St. Pete's, which was the nearest trauma center because he wasn't going to make it um, any further. Yeah, yeah. And Braden, you don't really remember much of that day, do you? Well, like I said, no, I don't. Yeah, well, you, but, yeah. You, I mean, because you were unconscious, you yeah. were in a coma. Yeah. And so t- the struggle, obviously, you wake up. What's the first thing that you kind of remember after waking up? The first thing I remember is, well, like, first thing that I could really collect, w- like, 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 like all my memories in one place is, 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 is the, is, it, well, like, okay, so the first th- memory that comes up to mind is, like, is like when I was in the in the Saint Saint Peter's Saint Yeah, the Saint, hospital. Saint, yeah, Saint Peter's. But yeah, so anyway I was in Saint Peter's and, and and I all I remember is just this bandage over my head and like this big giant robot thing like 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 saying say like saying to me like Braden stop doing that every time I'd pull out my bandages and I'd be like, Wait, what the hell is this? What's going on? Yeah. Right? But yeah. I mean, so talk to me a little about some of the residual effects of it, because there's residual issues, obviously, from from the accident. Yeah, so I'm right side deficit now, which means that my right side is basically like like it has a deficit, like like partially paralyzed, partially, but not exactly. I mean, okay. I can still move it and stuff like that. Okay. But yeah, I mean, like I can I still move it. It's just very difficult for me to move it. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like it's like, like like I always I always attribute it to like t- Toy Story, t- Toy Story Two. Woody when he has that limp right side, right? Oh yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, and and so talk to uh, any any other issues going on. Um. Besides the physical, nothing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, so like, so like, I'm trying to get pumping down. Mm-hmm. Which, which, like, long we're pumping, like that basically means that, like, that, like, that, like, that, like, that, like, basically, like, 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 you move your feet from mm-hmm. side to side. Okay. Right, and that propels you forward. Well, how long was the accident? How long was the accident? Dad? What do you mean? 
Well, how long ago was it, oh, James? Do you um, remember? Was it a couple years ago, right? Yeah, like four, three. Uh, four. Yeah, it was uh, 2018, 2019? 2019. 2019. Yeah. yeah. And so, James, I mean, he, he comes out, and so what are your thoughts right now? I mean, one, you're, you've got to be just thanking God he's alive, he's conscious, and he's, you know, talking to the doctors about recovery at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 been a whirlwind to say the least. Yeah, I imagine. You are listening to Let's Talk About It Sunday, an extension of KELA's weekday local talk show. Stay tuned. Let's Talk About It Sunday edition will return in a moment. Okay, and now back to business. Listen on the air and online. Online. K E L A. Let's talk about it. Good morning. You're listening to Let's Talk About It Sunday, an extension of KELA's weekday local talk show. This program was pre recorded, so no live phone calls on today's show. If you're just tuning in to Let's Talk About It Sunday, my special guest today is Braden Alley and his family. Braden uh, is the owner of Kraken Board Shop. If you've ever been to Riverside Park, uh, you'll see. Uh, there's a concession stand at the bottom, and then there's Kraken Board Shop. There's the skate park there. And Braden is a 23-year-old entrepreneur, and and really he is someone who had a traumatic brain injury, fell, had some partial paralyzation. He, he talks about a, a right side deficit uh, after after a really bad collision. And we're talking about kind of his story. And so, Braden, uh, when did you so so? How long? I mean, you're, are you still going through physical therapy? Are you? Yes, you still yes, are. Yes, I am. Yeah. So like, so like, the thing is, is that like, is that like, I mean, like, physical therapy is gonna be like, like pretty much a lifelong process. I feel like, like unless, unless something changes soon. But I mean, I don't know. But yeah. But it's gonna be something that you're gonna always kind of be working at. A... Yeah. Okay. I mean, like for the most part, yeah. I see my mom's shaking her head. Like she, she's yeah, shaking her head. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and and so what would you say to parents? I mean, I spent time with you, uh, yeah. and my son was there too, and we put together that skateboard, yeah. which he rides, that longboard. I say skateboard because well, I'm a skateboard. It's the same thing, right? It is. The yeah. longboard's long. It's a cruiser, right? Yeah. Uh, it's the Cadillac of skateboards. It's yes. kind of like the long, big, slow <laughs> lug, um, not the crazy stuff I would do. Um, yeah. <laughs> but so... What do you say to parents who who are like, well, isn't this an example of why I shouldn't allow my kid to skate? Um, yeah. So like, so like, I mean, obviously that, but no, no, no. I'm just teasing. Um, <laughs> yeah. So like, so like, so like, I, what, well, like, like, what I implore you, like, par- you parents to do is just is is like try your best to like encourage your 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 kids, you know, to to like wear a helmet. Mm-hmm. And stuff like that because the the, the helmet, sure, I may have ro- wore the wrong type of helmet, but like helmet still saved my life. And like, just imagine like 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 what I could have done if if you know like 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 I had a proper helmet, you know. And that's that goes for so many other things, right? Yeah. For riding a bike, riding horses. I mean, you should be wearing a helmet. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, James, you and I grew up in a different era. We did not wear helmets. Probably, I I can't remember ever wearing a helmet when I skateboarded. This is a perfect example of not only to wear a helmet but wear the right helmet. Absolutely, I and I, I agree. When we were you know running our BMX bikes all around town, we didn't have helmets or or pads. And you know I really didn't start getting into wearing helmets till I started seriously doing uh, mountain biking with with my wife. And it's like hey, we need a we need to have a helmet on. Yeah, and 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 of course it's super important. To make sure you wear the right helmet in a fitted one, I know that with my son, I sometimes stick a helmet on and I'm trying to get it to fit his little head because it's only ten and it's an adult one and it's important to have the right one. Yes, it is. It most definitely is. I mean, like, granted, right? Like, there are different certifications. So, like, so like skate skate certifications is going to be CPSC and ASTM. I don't know what the ASTM means, but the CPSC just basically means that it's all around skate related. But yeah. Yeah. And if you're just listening to Let's Talk About It on AM 1470 KELA or KMNT 104.3, my special guest today is uh, Braden Alley and his family talking about uh, Kraken Sport Shop or Board Shop. Yeah. And <laughs> also about, you know, how he ended up becoming an entrepreneur at 23, starting this business. And some of it came out of, uh, 
a, a traumatic experience where where he had a traumatic brain injury, some some uh, right side deficit after after a crash where he was in a coma for 13 days. Um, and, and and we're talking a little bit about that, how that happened. How did it happen? How did a guy like you say, all right, after all this, I'm starting cracking board shop and here I'm going to go to the city of Centralia. I'm going to work with my family to get this this building to to rent and I'm yeah. going to start a business. I mean, like, I don't know. It just sort of happened. Right. I mean, like, I mean, I mean, I mean like, I mean, like I started the business in 20, 2018 online and then and then I had the accident in 2019. And then I, I can't can help me out here, Dad. Sure, sure. Yeah. So as Brayton alluded to, uh, his senior year of high school, he have started applying for uh, his business license to get his online shop going while he waited to find the right brick and mortar location. And actually, the weekend before his accident, Brayden and I were in downtown Centralia looking at different places he could rent to set up his brick and mortar location. Yeah, and so, you know, how did you come up with this one here? I mean, obviously, the skate park helps, and it was a building not being used. Absolutely. (laughs) That's a win-win right there. Um, So, Braden and I and and Bonnie, we were just over at Riverside Park one day um, after his accident, um, just enjoying the day, and we saw a, uh, let's say, a family friend, um, and he's a skater, and he's like, hey, why don't you guys talk to the city about renting that empty building that's been there forever? And we're like, oh, light bulb goes off. What Mm -hmm. a great idea. Let's talk to the city. So that's how that all kind of started. Yeah. And and, and so what's kind of the relationship then? You rent it from the city and you've done a ton of improvements on it. I know that because I've been up there before you you took over tenancy. Yes, we've uh, since we've uh, rented it from them, we've uh, of course, we asked permission to do things and they they say yes, like paint the building. We painted the building. When we see uh, graffiti out at the ramps, we go take care of that as we see it. Um, and we just try to upkeep the building, make it look nice for the city, make it you know, look, look nice for everybody. Yeah, and there's some really cool pictures of that. If you go to crackingboardshop.com, that's their website. It's a really good website, and you can also buy things online. I, Bonnie, I, I want to talk to you a little bit because one, one thing you and I have talked about a little bit is improvements. The park itself, right? That's something you're really passionate about. And I know you and I have had long conversations about the skate ramps, improvements, the park, the building, lights. Uh, just kind of tell me your thoughts about that. And you, and you don't have to hold back any punches. You can be honest because I know it's been a frustration for you. Uh, well, we would love to see um, so many improvements to the park itself. Since we're there and we're seeing all the activity, we would love to see it um, just be better um with the ramps the concrete ramps getting right there the lighting on because right now um, they're wood it's wood and they have to go and the city does their best going out there and repairing right. it but they're repairing it all the time because you're repairing a wood ramp in washington, in, in washington <laughs> state where it rains yes right and you've seen situations where people have fallen or gotten hurt because the ramps are just they're not the right ramps for the right area right and bmxers you know we want them out there too but it's not really made for the bikes out there and so if we were if they were concrete you can have all kinds of activity going out there right Um, and and it's more than just about business it's about the fact that because when i've been out there to visit with you and when i go to riverside too because we we ride through there there's people on it people are always using it oh yeah it would be and it's it's huge and it's a nice setup and the park is beautiful behind the the skate park so right um, it's just a beautiful setting to enjoy, and so we want to just see people enjoy it more and not be so scared of bringing their kids out, um, you know, hurting themselves on the ramp because there's a something poking out or right. whatever. So we just want enjoyment. Yeah, and it's got and it's got to be the right one, right? It's it's also a, a collaboration with Rotary because it's Rotary yes. Riverside Park, and so Rotary I know has had plans yes. for many years. Obviously, COVID then hit, and I think some of those plans got put on the side. But I mean, they've been a good partner to the city as well. Oh yeah, so. they they definitely want to see some improvements there too, and the new city director, parks director, also. So good conversations happening. Good conversations happening, and most certainly, if you want to be a uh, be part of that. I'm sure Kraken Board Shop would be more than happy to engage you in that conversation to include you in that. And you had a really cool, Braden, you had a really cool um, 
Was it a competition or yeah, a it was contest? a skate contest. Yeah, so, that was so, pretty cool. So yeah, so like so like the skate t- contest it, it, it consisted of. Uh, Oh, what did it consist of, Dad? I don't even remember. We had a few different um, skill level brackets yeah. for a best trick competition. And then we had the highest ollie, the furthest ollie, and then the uh, just just an ollie contest. I don't... And you had music out there, too, right? I mean, it was kind of a little bit of a... Yeah, people were just hanging out, having a good time. It was a great time. We did, yeah. after the contest, have, like you say, uh, a band come out with some live music. And it was. we felt like it was very successful, really just a great time for everyone involved. Yeah. And you probably want to do more of those. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think we're going to have it, like, annually, right? Yeah. And if you're just tuning in to Let's Talk About It, uh, Let's Talk About It Sunday. I'm your host, Peter Rubarno, on AM 1470 KELA and 104.3 KMNT. My my guests today are the Alley family with Braden and uh, Kraken Board Shop. Uh, and you can go and visit them at krakenboardshop.com. Um, we're talking a little bit about Riverside Park, skating, Braden's, you know, situation as a 23-year-old entrepreneur, um, uh, you know, a skater, you know, the, his history on how he got here and his family and their participation in, and it's just a great board job. I encourage you to go there. And if you're a skater swing by Riverside park, it's, it's a lot of fun. And with competitions, I, I know Braden, we even talked about, you know, doing a movie night one night out there with like gleaming the cube or some of those cool, uh, cool, uh, skate movies. Yep. Yeah. Are you finding that skating? Because for sk- for when I was growing up, skating was really popular. So was BMXing and and a lot of tricks. And it kind of died down a little bit. But there's this resurgence now where you're seeing it more and more, especially with longboards, which I don't even remember longboards when I was a kid. Now they're really popular. And people are using them to commute and just cruise around campuses and, and around town. Yeah. So, like, the thing is, is that longboard has been around since, like, the 60s. Like, like early 60s, right? Well, there's so not like, that many hippies up here. No, <laughs> that is true, but yeah, no. But like, but like, granted, right? Like, 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 they're more popular in like Hawaii yeah. or certain areas around that, but yeah. It's, it's super cool. I mean, I know my son, uh, loves taking it out especially when there's these long paved paths where yeah. there's not a lot of sharp corners and just cruising around it's super cool to watch yeah it's that that like 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 that's like probably like the best scenario for that now granted right there is free ride at downhill which which before the accident i was a free rider i was delving into downhill just just a little bit mm-hmm. but mostly free ride yeah well the downhill stuff scares me oh yeah i mean yeah i mean like Granted, right? Like, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't have to say anything more. We've seen yeah. videos and like, you could just Google it or go on YouTube and see some of these downhillers going, you know, 60, 70 miles an hour. I mean, it's just insane to watch yeah. how fast they are. But it's also super impressive. I mean, what a skill. It's neat to watch. Yeah. I'll take, I'll take the maybe like five to 10 mile an hour, just cruise around like Centre College campus. Yeah, and the fastest I've gone uh, ever was like what, like forty, I think. Yeah, yeah, and then that was that was the day of the crash. But I digress. The, uh, the, uh, oh, what was it? It was the. Uh, was it like a competition or something? No, it wasn't a competition. It, it was, it it was just just me and a few homies that were that were just setting it down. But yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I, I think it's a really good story now. For you, what are some of your top sellers? I mean, when people come to your board shop, what are what are people mostly looking for? Parts to an existing board, or are they going straight up like I did and said, "I need a deck, I need trucks, I need wheels, I need bearings." Like, what do you mean? Like, like, like what? Some, I mean, what, what do you get a lot of? I mean, do you get a lot of people, you know, going from a zero to sixty? Uh, total build or are they coming in mostly for parts to existing boards? I mean like they're mostly coming in for parts so like bearings, you know, hardware stuff like that. Yeah. But like but like 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 there there's always like a few of them who who like want like a complete new board which is cool. Yeah. Like I did. Yeah, exactly. I mean I love that thing. That thing yeah. I, I, I you know, I have my I know my daughter wants one now because they fight over who gets to use it and and I struggle because I'm also fighting my 10 year old because I want to use it. The other day I was, I was, I was cruising around North Washington, just doing my thing. And my son comes out of the house and says, can I have my board back? You can ride this one. <laughs> right. Cause we, we, we ended up getting grip on, on one of the older boards, which was kind of funny. And I put the grip on, 
uh, but I kind of like using the new one. And so I, it's it's pretty addictive. I mean, when somebody has it, someone else wants one too because you want to do it in pairs. Yeah, it, yeah, for sure. It's fun fun to do it as a group. And with the size of the wheels now, especially on those long boards, you don't get tripped up by like little even gravel anymore. We were on, on the road and it was fine. Not like I think back in the day where when you had the short boards and you're, you know, doing ollies and tricks, you, you didn't have those big kind of hefty tires yeah uh what wheels you have on your moonshine again uh the cloud ones the cloud rides yeah oh, cloud gotcha rides. yeah yeah and it is like riding a cloud yeah i know well, it's like the, wearing a pair of sketchers on well, your skateboard well, well <laughs> the thing is is that like those wheels are like super soft right they're 78a but they come even softer than that they're like a like like some are like a 74a or like 72 or something like that, you know? I like how you try to upsell me on the softer wheels because well, that just I means mean, they're going to wear out faster and I'm going to have to come back to you. I mean, that's not necessarily true, but, I mean, if, if, if it makes another sale, then, you know, what am I going to think about, right? <laughs> well, I think there's going to be a lot of people who are who will listen to the show and say, well, what, are, why, what are they talking about skateboards for until they go and see it? It's going to bring back. If you're in your 40s, even your 50s, probably even your maybe your 30s it's going to bring back a ton of memories from back in the day and i don't know i jumped on those long boards i'm not going to get back on a on a small skateboard anymore i'm not going to be riding or jumping anything or doing ollies anymore even though i still try um but it brings back so many memories it's cool to be on the long boards i really encourage people if you if you used to skate and you want to kind of commute around town or go to the willapod the paved parts of the willapod or, or some of these others i know to Nino just built a nice little pump cruise. track. Yeah. yeah. But they also got just a, cr it's it's all paved. It's So it, you could just cruise around that even if you don't go on the pump track. Yeah, that is true too. Yeah, there's so many trails around here that are paved that you can just take it out and just cruise around. Or the college. I mean, that's where I like to go. I just cruise around the college. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Well, Braden, uh, thank you for coming. Mom and Dad, thank you for being here. Really appreciate, appreciate the story. Uh, and, and I do especially one of the big reasons I wanted you to be here is one, I think you're, it's a success story. You're young, you're an entrepreneur, you got a great business. Um, we we'll always want to promote that because it's cool. And two, to talk about, um, you know, your, you know, traumatic experience, what happened, but that you overcame it. You know, there's a message about helmets, but there's also yeah. that message where you say, it's like you get as a parent, as scared as you want to be, you want to make sure your kids get them all geared up, but don't, you can't wrap them in bubble tape. Yeah. But, but, but the helmet is key, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, for me, maybe not so much. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, yeah. my head's small. Well, like around. I implore you, Peter, to, <laughs> to get a helmet. You know? I do. I got it. I, you told me when I was out there testing it out, you're like, you got to wear a helmet. Yeah. So I heard the message and I wear my helmet. So I do. Good man. Even, even though it messes up my hair. Good man. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for coming in, and yeah. I want to thank you all for tuning into the Let's Talk About It Sunday show. I'm your host, Peter Robarno. Go to crackingboardshop.com. Check them out. Visit the uh, the Rotary Riverside Park. Check out that that skate park, and, and maybe we'll improve it a little bit. I, I really hope so, but there's a lot of great things going in all over our community, and Brain's a success story, a young entrepreneur with a great business and a great story. So thanks for tuning in to Let's Talk About It on AM 1470 KELA and KMNT 104.3.